Hello everyone, my name is Beagle and welcome back to another episode here from our Let's Play series. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. So right now I am recording a intro that I really shouldn't be recording. Because <laughs> the episode is already done and I'm only recording the intro for it now. Uh, to explain how that happened, basically I just had a time lapse for the intro of collecting all of these magma blocks and making another layer for our gold farm while I talked about what we're gonna do in today's episode so I'm gonna have to <laughs> do that again now so what we're gonna be doing today is a brand new giant project in our world well giant if we actually manage to pull it off which we most likely won't but we're gonna give it a shot but yeah before we start this new project we're gonna let Beagle from the past explain <laughs> the changes that we made to our gold farm, so take it over Beagle. So we used to have hoppers all around the killing chamber, and I changed that up, now we only have hoppers on one side, which is this one. They are under the slabs there, we used slabs on top of hoppers so uh, the piglins don't get stuck in the hopper holes, right? And if we come down here... We don't have anything to take aggro. Oh boy, okay. Well, we gotta do the brave thing then. We gotta go in and punch one. See this work. There we go. That sound <laughs> never ceases to scare me. Yeah, this farm is quite insane. Check this out. And we still haven't spawn proof a single thing down below the bedrock. Oh <laughs> my god. Uh... I'm gonna fix that real quick. Where is it? There we go. Much better. So, where are the hoppers? They're here, right? Yeah, so these are the new chests that the mobs are collecting to. Yeah, this does actually work. I do use this quite a bit, even though I don't show this on camera a lot. And yeah, 30 levels just like that. New piglins are spawning on the outside, here they come. I think we can actually make this slightly more efficient by adding trap doors about the glass walkways or even connecting all of the glass walkways all the way around with a non-spawnable non block like glass that way they don't need to go to the sides to actually walk off, they can just walk off anywhere, right? But yeah, the more you use this farm, the less piglins will start appearing Probably because they are taken by the mob cap down below the bedrock. So the only way to fix that is to actually spawn through the nether, which I don't really want to do. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But yeah, this farm is actually directly above our nether fortress as well. So when we spawn through the area below it, it's also gonna help the nether fortress get more raid. So that is a nice convenience. Actually, I'm curious, how much gold did we get? Oh, it's full, oh jeez. How much gold did we get in that small amount of time? Let's craft them up. Almost a stack, that's not too bad. Yeah, 44 gold for like 3 minutes is not bad at all. <laughs> I don't think so, at least. So, yeah. This project is kinda grindy, but I kinda enjoy working on it. It's my off-camera project right now. Oh, and they are still mad. Okay, <laughs> and this is a fun thing, let's fly down. This is what happens when you <laughs> come down from here. Are they gonna do it? Yeah, you can see them all the way up. <laughs> it's literally raining pigs. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. <laughs> Check out all of these drops as well, jeez. This was like three levels just on its own down here. Also, where did this guy spawn? Because they can't spawn on bedrock and this thing has a redstone component on top of it. How did you do it, Magma Block? How did you do it? Oh, we're out of minecarts? <laughs> well, that's annoying. Okay, I think we are ready to talk about our brand new project that we will be starting in today's episode. Oh, how I, <laughs> how I waited for this moment to finally begin this project. 
and I was postponing it for a good reason, and the reason is that you always need good infrastructure before starting a really big project in your world, right? And that is what we now have, we have a good income of iron, good income of gold, a bunch of different farms set up, all of the basics, infinite rockets, all that, right? However, unlike most of our other projects, this one is not for resource gathering, this one is for resource management. Haha, so if you check out our storage room here, the diamond cave, this is the place where I probably spend most of my time off camera, and I also cleaned up all of the shulkers that were just lying around here. How did this chicken come here? <laughs> Mobs aren't supposed to be able to walk. Around here we have a double carpet. Huh. Okay. So yeah, this here is our main storage room of the world, the Diamond Cave, and I still really like how this place looks with all of with all of the diamond ore and soul lanterns. We have soul sand so we can quickly move around here, enchanting table, map so we can see all of the progress we make, uh, all of the different workstations that you need, a bed for sleeping and silos for blocks that you have way too many of. So even though this storage room does serve its purpose quite well, I think we do need a better solution. And that's how I came up with today's project that we will start working on. And it is most likely a project that we will never, ever, ever finish. So keep that in mind, right? This project will be quite large scale, so I already set up a place where we will start building it today. It is this way from our base. So let's start flying. So this here is our main island. This is our task board. And if you fly this way, if we fly a little bit more up, you can see this is where we have the EFO phase. And this is the plains biome where we actually fought all of those charged creepers back in the day. So I think this is a pretty cool place where we can put this project. Because it's quite big. We have lots of different biomes all around it, if these like spikes <laughs> ever finish. Probably because we're loading a bunch of chunks. But yeah, we have a mountains biome, we have a spruce biome there, or a taiga biome. We have a forest, and we have a beach and a ocean surrounding it from this side. So that is looking pretty cool. And the idea of this project is... Now this is probably going to be <laughs> relatively hard to explain, but I'm gonna give my best attempt at this, right? So most people who have a long-term Minecraft world, they usually build a sorter that can sort every single item in the game, right? A storage system that can contain every single item, basically. So instead of focusing on storing every single item in the game, we should focus on making as many unique storage systems in a single place as possible. I think that is the idea for this build, and I think it is a pretty cool idea. <laughs> so, I do have a couple of concepts in mind, and we should also check out this chest. So, this chest, in it, I am slowly compounding all of the different materials materials that we should try to use for this build and we have a bit of a selection here so we have green leaves and green melons we have lots of brown tones reds we have this blue for dark prismarine uh, brighter colors and of course oranges down here and i also want to use a bunch of glass in this project as well and as far as a building style for this goes, uh, I thought about this a lot as well. So instead of like focusing on making a single building and putting everything in it, I think we're gonna have a centerpiece that is going to be outside, right? And then we will have a lots of pathways around the centerpiece. This and the side block is representing the centerpiece right now, by the way. <laughs> so we have the centerpiece and then the path around it will branch off to different sections of this project. That is the plan, at least for right now. 
Again, we are just in the planning phase. And it's really laggy today for some reason. But yeah, we are only in a planning phase, so stuff can change any time during the development of this project. Alright, so I sketched up a small plan here. The plan for our storage facility here. And... Oh yeah, we do actually need to come up with a name for it. I'll think about it later. <laughs> So this will hopefully give you a better idea of what we're trying to do here. So I'm gonna run you over through this real quick. So the first thing that, well, this is not the first thing that we will do. One of these three is going to be the first thing, but this is going to be the main thing that we will need. So the input chest or a shulker unloader, the E didn't fit. <laughs> so basically we just wanna come up to a chest, we wanna put our stuff into it and then it's gonna get sorted into these three different things and it's gonna take priority as well it's gonna first go through this one and prioritize this sorting facility then if this is full or doesn't accept its items it's gonna go here then here and then here and the first storage facility is going to be the ender sorter so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Ender Sorter idea. It's more of a concept than an actual storage unit. So I'm gonna try to teach you how this works in case you haven't heard about it yet. So basically we have five hoppers pointing into a shulker box here. And we have our Ender Chest here. Ender Chest, learn to speak Beagle. <laughs> we, have, we have our Ender Chest here. And it's got 16 different colored shulker boxes, right? For 16 different dice that are in the game. So basically we want to have 16 modules of this thing. And the idea is that the 5 hoppers with 5 items in it each will be able to refill our shulker boxes on demand. So let me just <laughs> quickly sleep here so we don't get blown up during the night. But yeah, the idea is that we have a filled up shulker box, like a redstone box over here. Uh, by the way, I took my time in between episodes to remake our old redstone box and I actually made it better so it's got everything we need now. Uh, these empty spots are also usually full, I just took some stuff out of there. So yeah, for example, let's say that the first five slots in our shulker box are redstone dust, redstone torches, repeaters, comparators and buttons. So what we do over here at the ender sorter is basically we put these items into these five slots and then we come back to the shulker, we take the next five blocks or items or whatever there is and we basically can fill up almost a whole shulker just through hoppers at 5 times hopper speed. Because we have 5 hoppers pointing into the shulker of course. There is just a small issue with this concept and that is that the hoppers actually only can hold 25 items total. Because 5 times 5 is 25 and a shulker box or any storage unit like a chest or a barrel has 27 slots, so we can't actually fill these two up. What we can do is put placeholder items there, like renamed items that the hoppers then can't interact with, right? The other solution is to use stuff like minecarts there. Like, we want to have minecarts in our redstone box anyway, so might as well put them into the two slots that are at the bottom, right? Or maybe with the wood chest we can put two boats at the bottom because they are made out of wood. So yeah, this is a pretty modern way of actually storing items in this game. The only other person that I saw use this is that guy and he came up with the idea as far as I know. <laughs> so the other step would be to store a variety of different things. Stuff that we don't really either use much or have too much of. And uh, with some examples listed down here like mushroom blocks, flowers, concrete, terracotta, grass, vines, leaves, that kind of stuff, right? So that is represented here. This is what I kind of want to have. So we can fill up chests like this, right? 
and if we fill up chests like this then other items can't come in unless they are already preset to be there like so right and whenever you wanna take an item out we just left click then right click and that is going to basically make the chest itself the filter for itself <laughs> instead of using hoppers like you usually see right so that is a pretty cool concept as well and of course we are not going to be using something like this we're gonna try to have it organized like maybe we will have a mob drop one and there's gonna be rotten flesh arrows bones spider eyes stuff like that right it's not gonna be <laughs> just garbage like this so number three would be bulk storage and that would store stuff that we have either a lot of or stuff that we used a lot uh you know stone dirt sand gravel netherrack basalt things like that and that will be done somewhat like this i'm trying to <laughs> just use some visual aids here we're gonna have a impulse sorter module here and it's gonna put items into the chests and the hoppers are going to act as filters as well we built these down there in our iron farm in the last episode i do believe yep <laughs> so that is the idea of this build and it's a lot i know <laughs> And that's why I say that this is going to be probably an unfinished project. Because it's so large scale. We haven't even begun and we're like 15 minutes into the episode at this point, I think. So yeah, we are going to try to follow the plan closely. And we'll add stuff to it as we go on. Because, you know, you usually come up with solutions or better ways of doing stuff already on the way of doing it. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for new ideas that we might come up with. Uh, other than that, I did actually put some more stuff into this chest. So we have emerald for another green color and oak for another brown color. And I really, really, really don't want to use any gray blocks in this build. This is a thing that I found about myself recently. Like, if you look at any build that we made... The most prominent color, for some reason, is grey. Our monolith is grey, the spruce town is grey, the outpost is grey, and on Metacraft we use grey as an accent color to all of our builds as well. So I really, really, really wanna take a break from using the grey color. So instead, Instead of using like a stone path, we will try using a red path using granite and bricks. So that is going to be a first time experiment for me as well. Okay, I think that is enough talking for one episode. We're gonna try to actually build something for this project today as well. Uh, these two guys, <laughs> they are kinda in the way. And we need to move them. I don't know how to move them. <laughs> We do need to break the boat somehow and just lure them into another boat. Because I want to build the entrance to this place around here somewhere. So this is where we have the centerpiece sketched out. So we need to move all the way around here. This is where I want to have the entrance and this is where the creepers are as well. So I will try to do this. My X spike There we go. <laughs> okay, I need to be careful not to... Aggro them. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Come on. Really? Okay, there we go, there we go. Come here, come here. Okay, we got one. That is actually way better than catching both of them at once. Because now we can... Well, actually we can't go in a boat with them. Actually, we can use invisibility, no? Oh, we could probably totally use invisibility and boat around with creepers. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what an amazing idea. So, I'm kind of having one of those problems that artists have when they are really excited to start a new project and they open up, you know, Photoshop or whatever they are using to draw and it's just the white blank screen staring back at them and they can't, for the love of them, actually start the, the process of actually making it. So, I think we are just going to place two blocks here to start. My biggest project ever. <laughs> oh, my voice is kind of shot, by the way. I've been talking a lot today, so I do apologize. So we have two honey blocks. I kind of want to have those 
like that and we're gonna put some sea lanterns that is a lie some <laughs> jack o lanterns yeah that's the name under them for light i kind of sketched this out in creative already but yeah i'm, I'm kind of improvising on the spot as well as we go so we have a nice five block gap in between these and we're probably gonna Oh yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't jump on her honey blocks, I forgot about that. But yeah, we're gonna put some wooden pillars here like this. I, I usually don't show builds like this on camera, but maybe you guys will enjoy it. Especially when starting a big project like this. I think it's important to show the first few blocks placed. Okay, how's that looking? That looks like a pretty cool entrance. Uh, we probably want to have... Trap doors around this, so it isn't just a, you know, yellow random block at the end of this. We want to have dark brown, lighter brown, and you can kind of see the yellow through it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Misplaced the jack-o'-lantern there. The face was supposed to go that way, so we couldn't see it. But I think we want to cover it up anyway. I want to have a dark prismarine roof like this but we don't really have <laughs> dark prismarine so we gotta grab some from our monument which is that way this is a cool trick when you don't have water breathing portions on you as well you can do this and break the middle block i say <laughs> break the middle block there we go and yeah it, it removes the water from here and you can breathe that way. Pretty neat. Such a nice view. <laughs> We're gonna make a small arch like this. Cover up the pumpkins. We're gonna make the same slope in the middle, but we're gonna try to have it one slab above it to see how that looks i don't actually <laughs> know how it will look i'm just experimenting here but hopefully it looks decent yeah <laughs> i do kind of like that uh, we can put some sort of block there as well uh, probably something bright like these emerald blocks i think they could work relatively well oh like spike <laughs> So let's try that. I'm kind of trying to figure this out as we go together. Yeah, that's not half bad, is it? Hmm. I'm gonna give it some thinking time. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I think I might be introducing one color too many here. Aye, aye, aye. I think the emerald box, even though it does stand out nicely, maybe we can... Replace it with something else? Maybe? I don't know. But I'm gonna try to keep experimenting here. Maybe we can try something like this. That does look kinda cool. It gives it some more support. Uh, we definitely not need to put a arch here though. We're gonna do the same thing that we did in our iron farm recently. I like that. <laughs> I do actually kind of like that. Okay, okay. I think it's slowly coming together, the entrance here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I like this one slightly more. I still want to experiment with that block up there, however. Because I do like the honeycomb there as well. But maybe we can try honey alone? This see through, and that might be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> That's why we experiment, though. Uh, what other block is there that we could try? We could try a few actually. Let's let's actually take these prismarine blocks. I just took these randomly from the temple. Not bad, but I think not the vibe I'm trying to go for here. Magma blocks, maybe. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that is actually kind of cool. But I think I'm gonna pass just for now, so we can experiment with more of these. Oh, the pumpkin looks really cool, I think. Oh, I, I really like the pumpkin there. Oh, Lex Mike. 
I actually do really, really, really like the pumpkin there. Uh, I'm gonna try two more things, however. I'm gonna try the bookshelf and the loom, because those are gonna look very interesting there, I think. So let's see how that looks. Oh, that does look really cool as well, no? Maybe my taste is just really weird, <laughs> but I think these do look really cool. Okay, let's try the loom here as well. Oh, the loom also looks really good. <laughs> and now I can't decide. Oh no. Well, I'm gonna wait for your guys' opinion, probably. And uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave the pumpkin there. And we are also gonna use the jack-o'-lantern instead of a normal pumpkin, and we're gonna face it sideways. That is not sideways. <laughs> Can I please face this sideways? Please? There we go. Th that way we will get more light on the top, which is a good thing. Alright, so... The first part of the entrance is looking pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna try to figure out the pathway now, however. So this is the block palette I wanna use for the ground. So it's bricks, polished granite and normal granite. And that does look pretty cool. I also wanna use coarse dirt mixed in with it. That way we get even more brown, which should look good. I think we're gonna have to do a lot of experimentation with this to get it exactly right. Greetings, have you come to look at my amazing creation? <laughs> no, it still needs a lot of work, but I am starting to like this. Like, this is the first thing that you will probably see when entering from this forest here. So we do need to make sure that it looks cool, and I think it does actually stand up to my expectations. Yeah, that does look pretty cool. <laughs> and it's also gonna get slightly bulkier when I finish it from this side, because I need to replicate that roof pattern over here. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm trying to build here, in peace. Why are you ruining everything? <laughs> okay, I can't. I really can't reach that, come on. Hiya! Oh man. Okay, so the entrance is done from the both sides now. Um, we will probably use some fences here just to break up this thing slightly. So we have kind of like a line that defines that this is the base and this is the outside of the base, right? And while building this, I actually came up with a pretty decent name that I actually came up with before, <laughs> and I just forgot about it. So let's make a sign, so we can put it on top of this, so we can officially claim this as our new base, or our new project. It's basically gonna turn into our base if we successfully manage to pull this off somehow. So the name of this thing is going to be... How do I line this? Probably like this. D compendium project it's too big <laughs> the compendium project <laughs> that looks pretty cool and i think it is a really cool name so yeah the comp a compendium is basically just a library of things i think i am not entirely sure actually <laughs> what the word means but i'm pretty sure it's something like a library or a book that contains many things of a similar nature, right? So this is going to contain a bunch of sorters and stuff, and those sorters are also gonna sort different things on their own, so they are basically compendiums within a compendium, right? Therefore the compendium project. I hope I'm getting that right, and I hope I don't sound like an absolute moron, because that is not right at all. <laughs> There is still a thing that I haven't said about this project that I actually want to do. So, as for decorating the inside of it, I actually want the whole inside of the Compendium project to be outside, maybe except for the actual storage rooms. But, I want to decorate the outside using furniture that you would normally find inside a house. So that is exactly what we're gonna 
try to do here. It's gonna be <laughs> tough making this look good, probably, but might as well try. So we're gonna take these bookshelves here and we're gonna make a simple bookshelf, which normally wouldn't probably catch your eye, but since it is outside instead of being inside where it usually su is supposed to be, it might actually look pretty cool. So maybe we can do something like this and just run trapdoors over it. I am speaking like a robot for some reason. <laughs> okay, do that and then run some trapdoors like this. Okay, okay. Yeah, that looks pretty cool now. And maybe we can put flower pots in these spaces. Or anything for that matter. Maybe a secret button that leads somewhere. Oh. <laughs> oh. The ideas are starting to flow now, aren't they? Okay. We're gonna put some dark oak like this. Grip it. Yeah, that is a pretty cool bookshelf. Uh, we do need to put the trapdoors all the way around though, I think. Yeah, I don't think I actually like having the coarse dirt there. I think it actually looks way better with only the granite and the bricks. But yeah, that is going to be the end of today's episode. I know, <laughs> extremely, extremely, extremely talky episode today, but we needed to get it out of the way. So the next episode we will probably focus on this thing around here and we will hopefully set up at least one of these storage rooms relatively soon. Not that we're really in a rush to make them, but it would be cool to see this project finished. <laughs> I'm already planning to finish the project and we barely made the entrance, look at me guys. So yeah, do let me know what you think of this project, hopefully you will enjoy it as much as I will enjoy making it. So far I'm enjoying it, <laughs> I really like this build style, this kind of modern fantasy, kind of slightly Japanese style. I don't know. <laughs> and it's also just the first building, so the other buildings will also look slightly different as well. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!